What's going on guys? Welcome back to Spinning True. So today I'm working on a bike wheel and bike frame storage rack here in my new bike workshop. And if you haven't seen this workshop yet on my channel, I'll give you a quick tour. So this is a 10 by 15 storage unit. And the main thing in here is some pallet racking, which stores eight bicycles. My collection is bigger than eight, but I'm trying to pare it down a little bit. And this is going to be my main bike storage area. I also have my work stand in here, which is going to go into that corner. This unit is not completely set up yet, and that's part of what this project is about. Moving on around, I've got my studio light set up there. Um, back there is a new rolling tool chest. I'll give you a tour at some point, but I've been able to put all my bike tools in there, and that just rolls in and out. It also doubles as my bike work stand. And then this corner is going to have trash cans and things like that. But as you can see here, I've got bikes in the hallway. I've got a lot of other stuff going on. And, you know, this either isn't enough space or it's space that needs to be organized better. And so what I'm doing here is I'm basically going to build a rack to hold frames hanging from the top. And it's going to have a storage space here for wheels. And the reason is because if you take a look at my bike, some of these are my personal bikes or at least bikes I'm selling. I've got the GT single speed that you may have seen. I've got my Rally Technium. I did a build video on that. Surly Ghost Grapper did a build video on that. Need to ride it. Need to ride both those two videos selling this one. Uh, a lot going on on the channel there, aside from what I'm doing here today. And then the Lotus Eclair and my Fairlight and a couple bikes here that you haven't seen. And that's because these are bikes that I am either parting out or going to strip down and rebuild. And so what I figured is that it would be nice to have more bike storage space, but what I could really use is frame storage space because the two on the end here, um, that Surly over there and this stump jumper are going to get stripped down and sold as parts. And the Bridgestone there, I'm going to take it apart and then build it as a one by 10. I've also got frames lying around like this GT Tequestra, this Schwinn Woodlands, which I'm building up for myself. And then I've got a couple other frames coming that need a place to live. And the frames are, that are hanging around here and the wheels that are hanging around here are really not organized in a good way. So I figured if I can store my frames um, in a way that takes up less space, I'll first of all have more space for bikes and maybe I won't just won't need quite as much bike storage. So that's what's going on here. I've already actually tried filming this and tried to show you my thought process but I realized that I don't really like this design. So I um, just realized that it's raining outside and I thought that there were people here walking around. So I got a little bit confused, but I'm not really completely happy with what I've done here. The base is good. This is the wheel storage area and I'll show you how that works. So basically anything up to a 29er mountain bike should fit between those two by fours and be off the ground. Those two by fours there are 18 inches apart, which is quite far, but 29ers fit, 700C wheels fit, as do 26 inch wheels, both with and without the tire. And that means that basically a frame can hang down to approximately, you know, 29, 30 inches off the ground and clear this tire. And this store space is eight feet tall and the door is, you know, about six and a half feet off the ground, this part of the door. So I did some thinking and calculating and whatnot and figured that if I had a shelf that was 78 inches off the ground, which is what the top of this two by four is, had that coming all the way across, I would have about 18 inches of space above that for boxes and stuff. Now that pallet racking is about two feet below the bottom of the, um, you know, that wire mesh there. So a little bit shallower of a, of a space, but that should be enough space to hang most of my frames. And then I also figured that I needed about almost two feet to one side of a frame to be able to have it hang and not hit the wall of the storage unit. Um, so a couple things I don't like about what I've done here. First of all, I have this 18 inch two by four here. And then what I've done is I've basically, um, you know, this 18 inches here is for the wheels but these two by fours are two feet across apart to make a two foot shelf and space to hang the frame. 
but I don't like the way this corner here is just floating. So what I should have done is had a two foot two by four here that screws directly into that. And then, you know, had that one at 18 inches, um, you know, in order to have it all one, one unit that would add stability to the whole structure. But what the biggest mistake I made here, and I just realized is that I mounted this upright on the outside. And that means that the gap here, this is an eight foot two by four on the ground. The gap between the uprights is more than eight feet. And that means I cannot simply screw an eight foot two by four between those uprights. And that's why I decided to stop and redo this. So what I'm gonna do here is as usual, I'm running out of time, it's 640, but I'm gonna do a little bit of work here on just rebuilding this a little bit. And um, I'll try and show you some of the steps and then show you what uh, this, um, you know, looks like after I get it kind of rebuilt and set up for hanging frames. So my method for cutting stuff is very simple. I just measure and obviously mark. And then I've got a square and I just squared off across the board. And then I also squared off that way, not on the back, but on the front. And then I just cut with a handsaw and try and follow that line as best as possible. Now this is just rough construction, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So a handsaw like this works just fine. But here, what I learned is that if you put your finger like that on the saw, it kind of helps, you know, um, make a straight cut. And then having that, those guidelines also really helps. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but close enough. So I've got some two foot sections here, which are gonna make up part of that base on the floor that holds the wheels. But the long two by fours need to be 18 inches apart. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark that here just to give myself a bit of a visual. And then I'll be able to go ahead and put this together, you know, pretty easily. So pretty straightforward construction here. I'm just basically screwing this all together. And I'm just using some standard construction screws that have a couple different lengths here. These ones are two and a half inches long and they are the star drive ones. If you want to make your life hard, get Phillips screws. If you want to make it easy, get some of the star drive or Torx ones. And then I'm also using my DeWalt 12 volt drill that I did do a video on. Love this drill so much. You can see as I put this together, the way this just blasts through, you know, screwing two by fours together. So, uh, yeah. And then it's just a matter of screwing this stuff together. Really straightforward. Again, you can just see the power in that 12 volt drill. Just noticed, and maybe you caught me, that I said I wanted these long two by fours 18 inches apart, and I'm drilling them in um, 24 inches apart. So I've got to fix that before I finish building this frame. Okay, I'm not going to go ahead and attach some uprights, making sure they go on the inside so I can attach a top rail, but very similar attachment method here. Well, I probably should be using a level, but my level is actually at home. So what I'm going to do for now is eyeball this, and if it's really off, I'll just you know, adjust it later or forget about it because this is a purely utilitarian project here. It doesn't really have to be pretty or perfect. That's one. I'm trying to stagger the way these screws go in a little bit just to try and keep that wood from splitting too much and adding to the overall stability of the structure. Kind of hard to you know, press this all together as I screw in the first screw. Okay, so what we've got so far is that frame on the floor with the two foot two by fours and the uprights on this side. These uprights are eight foot tall and now I'm gonna attach a cross piece. 
cross piece, you can see I've got some you know, guidelines there for where the cross two by fours are gonna screw in. Okay, so I did mark those lines with a square. So in theory, it should be pretty level, but you know, with the movement, the hand sawing and whatnot, it's not gonna be perfect. I probably should use a level, but you know, again, don't have that here. So I'm just gonna do my best and try and screw this in. It's also pretty hard to hold this. Um, it's kind of heavy, but let's get one in at least here. Or at least started. Same thing on this side. This one's easier because obviously that's helping to hold this all together. And yeah, if a screw poked out the other side, it's because some of these construction screws are three and a half inches. Doing this all in Imperial, obviously, because I'm here in the US. I know a lot of people watching around the world are using metric, but all the construction stuff you buy here is just all US units. So that's kind of what I'm stuck with, even though I'm trying to convert inches to feet and all that stuff, which in theory makes sense because it's a base 12 system and it's really easy to divide mentally, but in practice, it gets confusing very quickly. So it's obviously the exact same thing on the other side, except these uprights are only 78 inches tall. Um, I'll show you why after I screw this together. Okay, so basically these uprights here have to be shorter because I want them to be below where this rolling door rolls up in case I want to move the shelf to that end of the storage unit. And also this 78 inches should be enough to hang frames and still have wheels down there, um, you know, resting on the two by fours. Next thing here is to attach a horizontal rail, but to me, see here, looks like uh, the cross piece on this side is higher than it should be for whatever reason. So I'll double check that, but uh, in any case, yeah, it definitely is, it's definitely higher. But we'll go with obviously this height here. Hopefully that is 78 inches and we're gonna screw a, you know, a, a cross member to that, uh, to this frame. So it's uh, just me working on this. So that makes it a little difficult sometimes to hold stuff. Let's see here, this should come out around right about, is it resting on something? No. See if I can use the old head holding technique. Hmm. Let me tack it to the, hmm, yeah. Try and tack it to the other end real quick. All right, so that's obviously just temporary. And now, can screw this. Okay, check. Actually it looks pretty good. Let's put the, well, let's do a top one. I'm not left-handed. A little harder with my left hand. And then looking at this, I think that I went, I, I don't know why I have two lines there. Well, let me show you. So looking at this compared to the top of the storage, um, unit wall. This is just sloping up a little bit, but if it hit where that cross member went, is it would be sloping up a lot. So I think what I did here is for some reason I have two lines here. That's probably my 78 inch line right there, and I don't know what that top one is. And so I'm probably gonna have to screw this underneath that line, but I should probably just double check. And there you go. It's actually not even 70, it's a little bit above. So um, I'll just guesstimate that and we'll screw this in just a little bit below that line. Okay, more left-handed drilling here. Well, here we can right hand it. Okay, now, we do actually have a line scribed right there. And again, I need to go just a little bit below that line. That looks pretty good right there. There we go. And then for security, another screw here, another screw at the other end. Okay guys, I think that's about all I can do today because I am running out of time. I'm doing something tonight. And unfortunately, the way my life is right now, I just don't get 
lots of big blocks of time to do bike stuff and YouTube stuff. So hopefully I'll be able to come back in a couple days and we can finish this off and um, organize my unit a little bit more. Okay guys, that's a couple days later. I'm back. I'm going to finish this rack tonight. And I just did a little thinking and I've reconfigured this slightly. Basically, I moved these cross pieces from the outside to the inside and shifted them down a bit. And now I'm going to tie in a cross piece a little bit further back um, in order to hang the frames from. And so my goal now is to figure out how far in from the front I'm going to have my cross piece. And that depends on how the uh, frames hang there. And then I'm basically just going to take some of this scrap 2x4 and I'm going to attach it like so, just to have a little platform for my uh, 2x4 to rest on. And then I'm going to have a 2x4 resting on top of this facing in that direction. Actually, the platform is just so I have something to screw into because it's pretty hard to screw two 2x4s two together the long way like this. Okay, so here's a frame. This is a Schwinn Woodland you may have seen on the channel, which I will eventually be building up, maybe in the winter. Let's see. And then I'm going to use the same bike hooks I used for the bike rack behind me. And basically, the goal is to see how far this way or this way I want the frame or the, the cross piece to be, and also whether I want the frame turned the way it was or this way. I think this way is better because the fork tends to stick out a little further and it's fine if it sticks out that way. And then I'll push everything as close to that wall as I can. So I think I'm gonna move the, the rack into position a little bit here and then see how far that way I can go without touching the wall and then leave a little bit of a gap in case I get a frame that hangs a little bit differently or something like that. Okay, so with this in its final position, I think I actually want the frames to hang right about here. It gives me about three inches that you can't see to the wall and it all looks pretty natural. Um, the fork does stick out almost a foot, but uh, I think that's gonna be the best I can do here. I guess I can try again to see what it would look like yeah, turned around, I'd have to hang it like here. And, you know, I guess that would protect the fork a little better. Maybe I could just hang it right off that 2x4. But no, I think everything sticks out more that way if I do that. So I'm going to go about here. Okay, so I'm going to measure that approximately on my side. And where I was holding that frame was approximately 7 inches from this side of the rack. Okay, this is more very simple construction, but I guess the scrap pieces I had are maybe a little bit too scrappy. So I've got a couple of one foot sections here. And then I'm just using some three and a half inch screws. And hopefully nothing splits out on me here. I guess I could go under the cross piece too if I wanted. You know, I could almost... Just thinking about this again, let me show you what I'm thinking here. Okay, so this is my seven inch mark here. And I'm kind of wondering if I can do away without this cross piece and just save a little bit on space. I guess I wanted to make a shelf up there though. So yeah, maybe it's okay to leave it for now. I was thinking for a minute I could screw a two by four into the other side of the upright, but that wouldn't be far enough over. A um, couple different ways of doing this, but I think I'll just stick with the original plan. All right, this is actually sticking up a little bit higher over here. And what I don't have is a level. So instead I'm gonna measure from the ground. So this comes out to actually just under 78 inches. It's probably a quarter inch off. What this probably means is that to fix this, I should lower this cross piece a little bit but I actually think this is going to be good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just going to roll with it like this. And this is going to be the top of my shelf there. And of course, it's the same thing over here as well. Actually, that might split out there. Let's go.
Okay, now I'm gonna install another upright here, and this is gonna be more very simple, very basic construction. So I'm just gonna measure uh, this distance here. Maybe you can see what I'm thinking to do with this. So that's actually six inches. Okay, I'm gonna make this six inches, or if I have a one foot section, I guess I could cut it in half. But I don't think I do. Well, that's close. No, I only need one piece. What am I thinking here? All right, let's make it six. Just gonna make sure I have a nice square line there and on my side. Good enough. Probably should move this out a little bit, but it's gonna be fine. Okay, so the total length of this two by four, I guess I can go from the end. It's exactly 99 inches. So I wanna center my upright at half of 99, which is what, 49 and a half. Which is right there, but this is gonna get centered there, but I'm gonna screw that to the six inch piece like so. So really, what I need to do is in order to figure out where the center of the six inch piece goes, I need to subtract out the width of a two by four, which is an inch and a half. So I need to subtract an inch and a half from the 49 and a half, so that puts me at 48. And that's gonna be the center of this piece. Okay, more super simple construction here. And, you know, just, eh, that's pretty strong. Uh, if that wasn't strong enough, well, yeah, I'm gonna brace that a little bit, just, just to be sure. Yeah, I'm gonna end up putting one of these in, but I will do that after I attach the upright. Okay, so I want this to be vertical and I'm just gonna look at it compared to the wall here. As my old boss would say, using the old icometer. Um, this 2x4 is a little warped, but that's probably good enough right there. All right, there we go. It feels like I'm framing a house here, but that one diagonal made this absolutely solid. No movement at all in that direction. A little bit front to back. I guess I could, you know, brace this a little bit, but I think I'll just go with it as it is and add more if I need to. So I'm gonna tie up some loose ends here and then it'll be time to put in my hooks so I can hang my frames. All right, it's probably overkill, but I'm gonna add a little bit of bracing here just to make sure this connection is really, really strong. Okay, I think I'm pretty good with the construction. So now let's figure out the spacing. So the distance between the two faces of the two by fours on either end is 90 inches, which is cool because then I can work with 10 inch spacing. I think I was, I guess I could actually do nine inch spacing. I was planning on doing nine inch spacing at first so I could have 10 nine inch spaces. And I guess I could space, you know, put the first hook four and a half inches from either end. So uh, I think that math is right, but uh, it's getting kind of late. So, you know, if not, however it comes out on that end, it's gonna be fine. And I'm not too worried about you know, getting this perfect, but I just measured four and a half inches over. I'll measure about nine over from that, which is right about here. 
I don't even have 10 hooks right now. I've just got a couple. I actually have, I think, three frames to hang up. So let's, you know, go another nine. And, you know, just for fun, let's do one more. Right about there. So I'm going to put in four hooks and then we'll clean up. Oh no, I, I forgot to press record. So I skipped ahead a little bit, but uh, basically took this drill bit, drilled out my holes. Um, hopefully you saw the measuring, but basically this distance, 90 inches. So I have 10 nine inch gaps to play with. I'm going in four and a half inches from either end and then nine inches between the hooks. And then these are bike hooks from Home Depot and they just screw into place. Very, very simple. It helps if you use, you know, something like this hammer handle for extra leverage, but I'm just gonna screw them in like so. That's probably good enough. The frames don't really weigh that much. You know, whether I need another upright here to hold all the frames or not, we'll see. I'm kind of thinking not. This is, you know, pretty strong construction. Let's see. That's totally capable of holding nine frames. Okay, and there we go. Got four hooks in. I'll add more later on as I buy hooks. And now let's try hanging up some bikes. So, Schwinn Woodlands. No, it's not. It will, but the hooks are a little close together. Let's see if I can get another frame in there. Actually, I was gonna go the other way, wasn't I? I think I was gonna go this way. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Okay, I've got this Trek mountain bike, no fork. I'm probably going to scrap this, but for now, yeah, I mean, it will, it will go in there. It's just not ideal. A little close spacing, I guess. Okay, and then I've got this GT Tequestra. This is almost a complete bike. It's a little heavier, a little more awkward. Let's see how that fits. Okay, so there you have it. This is not ideal because of the cranks, and I suppose the handlebars might be a problem, um, but this is really meant for frames, not so much partial bikes like this. Um, I'll probably just move this down one hook, or if I feel like it, I'll have maybe a couple hooks that are spaced further apart. I have a hard time imagining I'll have nine frames hanging here, but look at the bikes. I've got you know, two, four, six, eight bikes in here and that's not even my whole collection. There's three out in the hallway right now. Got the uh, Dutch bike over there. I've got the, uh, got this Trek 520 I picked up. Got my Univega, so quite a lot going on in this storage unit, but at least I'll have frames out of the way. So um, yeah, I've only got a couple wheels right now. I sold the uh, 700C pair that I was using early on in the video. So now let's see how those fit and here I may need to build some sort of dividers, but let's see how they fit under the frames. All right, I've got a pair of 26 inch wheels. And yes, they do fit under the frames. They do want to fall. I'll have to think about this if I just always have them at one end or put in dividers or what I do. But uh, yeah, check this out. You know, pretty good clearances here. There's definitely going to be enough clearance or a 700C wheel, you know, maybe not under the handlebars, but, you know, depending on what I'm storing here, I'll be able to rearrange this and, you know, make this work different ways. Okay, so that is gonna be the video for today. This is not 100% done. I'm gonna have to figure out a way of, you know, having some shelving up here. Maybe I'll get a piece of plywood or something. Maybe I'll have more shelving higher up. Um, you know, have to think about some dividers put in the rest of the hooks and just kind of see how this evolves. But, you know, the overall structure is done and, you know, figured I'd take you along for the ride and show you how, you know, I come up with a storage system for this unit. I've got actually more ideas after doing this. I might build a little shoe rack out of two by four scraps and also uh, a rack for recycling bins, just, you know, to help use the vertical space in this. Because again, this is a 10 by 15 storage unit, quite small. I've got my bike stand in here. I've got my big workbench out there. There's a lot of stuff that needs to fit into here. And, you know, to make the, the most efficient use of the space, I'm gonna have to build racks and think vertically and stuff like that. So eventually I will do a little tour of my unit once I get it set up. 
I'll show you the rack once it's finished. If I refine the bike storage area, I'll show you that. Um, so you can look forward to those kind of videos and then hopefully soon I'll be able to do some bike building, but it's also summer. So, you know, I really want to be out there and working a lot actually. So I haven't really had too much time for YouTube or doing bike stuff. Um, but you know, as I get more time, I will be putting out videos. So as always, I definitely appreciate you watching me. Thanks for watching, watching. Take care and have a great rest of your day.